Welcome to Electro Online, and in this video, we're going to show you where the parallel axis theorem came from. So here's the parallel axis theorem. I is equal to I at the center mass plus MD squared. So what does that mean? Well, you have an object right here, which is rotating about its center of mass. This is the center mass of the object. And the axis of rotation is through the center mass, and you see the object rotating. And the moment of inertia, typically at that point, I, would be equal to mr squared times a constant depending upon the shape of the object. And of course, we can calculate that using some equations like we saw in the previous videos. So that's the general equation for the moment of inertia. Now, what happens when we move the object to a different location? Let's say we move it so that the center of mass is now located over here. You can see that we moved it a distance a in the x direction and a distance b in the y direction. So the displacement right here, that's equal to d, and d would be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. All right, now, how do we calculate the parallel axis theorem? Well, the way we do that is by first calculating the moment of inertia of an object like this. And we can say that i, when the object's center mass is placed at the axis of rotation is going to be equal to the sum of all the little pieces of mass. So what we can do is we take very tiny little pieces of mass of the whole object, multiply the mass times the distance to the center of mass or the axis of rotation squared, and then sum them all up. So the equation will look like this. So that would be equal to the sum of all the masses times the distance from there to there squared, so that would be the distance between these two, that would be x sub i minus x cm quantity squared plus, that would be y sub i minus y, that should be not an x but a y, y cm quantity squared like that. Notice normally we would of course put the square root on there if we simply want the distance, but we don't want the distance, we want the distance squared, so it looks like that. That's the moment of inertia. Uh, when the axis rotation is at the same location as the center mass of the object. Now, what happens when we move the object to a different location? Now we can see that I nu is equal to the sum. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to take small little pieces of mass. This is m sub i and multiply times the distance to the axis rotation. Now, instead of having this distance right here, we're going to have this new distance right there. So how do we express that new distance? Well, we do it like this. We'll say m sub i times, this would be x sub i minus x cm minus a quantity squared plus y sub i minus y cm minus b quantity squared. And you might remember this from algebra. When you have the, the circle, let's see, the equation of a circle would be equal to x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And then we move the center of the circle to a different location like hk, then we write x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. So we use the exact same principle here. We move to a new distance a, a and b away from this location. And so that's why we add those terms. In other words, we subtract those terms from the original equation to give us the new equation. So this now represents the moment of inertia of the, at the new location of the object. Now, Will this equal I center mass plus MD squared? Well, that's what we're here trying to prove. So let's see if we can do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply these terms out and see what we get. So I nu is equal to the sum of all the pieces of mass times. Now here we have A minus B minus C squared, for example, just to make it a little bit easier. Let's try this here. So if we have A minus B minus C squared, that's basically times a minus b minus c, what would that equal to? Well, first of all, it would be the three terms squared, so it would be a squared plus b squared plus c squared, and that would be a times a minus b, and a minus b times a, that would be minus 2ab, and a times a minus c, and a minus c times a would be minus 2ac, and then a b times, a minus b times a minus c, and a minus c times a minus b, that would be plus 2bc. So notice we end up with six terms in each of these multiplications. So you can see where the terms came from. So we can now say that this would be equal to x sub i squared plus xcm squared plus a squared 
minus 2 x sub i times x sub n, right, a, b, x sub n, minus 2 x sub i times a, and plus 2 x sub m times a, like that. Those are the six terms, just like we have them over there. We do the same for this right here. That would be plus y sub i squared plus ycm squared and plus b squared and then minus 2 y sub i ycm minus 2 y sub i b and plus 2 ycm times b. All right, so that here would be the new moment of inertia. Now, if we multiply these out, we would get the following. And let me use a different color so you can see the difference. So this would be x sub i squared minus 2 x sub i x cm plus x cm squared. And then we do the same over here, plus y sub i squared minus 2 y sub i y cm and then plus y cm squared. Notice that those six terms also appear somewhere in here. Six of these terms are the same as those six, which means that portion represents ICM. Let's go find them. So we have x sub i squared and x sub i squared right there. Minus 2 x sub i x cm, that is right here. That's this term right there. x cm squared right here. We have y sub i squared. It's right here. Minus 2 y sub i y cm. That's this term right there and ycm squared, that's this term right there. So those six terms represent ICM. We can take those out and replace it simply by ICM, which means that I nu is therefore equal to ICM plus the sum of all the masses with the remaining terms. So that would give us an a squared plus b squared minus 2x sub i a plus 2x sub m a. And then here we have minus 2y sub i b and plus 2y cm b. All right, now, also remember that a squared plus b squared is equal to d squared. So this term right here, is d squared, and d squared times the sum of all the little pieces of mass of the object ends up being the whole mass of the object. So we have ICM plus m d squared right here plus these terms right there. So it means, that means that this portion right here is already representative of the parallel axis theorem. Then the question is, what about those four other terms? Why did we forget about them, or why did we throw them away? Well, it turns out that they actually are equal to zero, and we'll show in just a moment why. The equation for the center mass, x center mass, is equal by definition the sum of all the pieces of mass of the object times the distance to that object divided by the sum of all the mass of the object. And then if we move this over here to the other side, we get the sum of all the mass of the object times x cm is equal to the sum of all the mass of sub i times x sub i. So we know that that is equal to each other. So now take a look here. x sub i times m sub i and x cm times m sub i, those are supposed to be equal to each other. And since we have a negative here and a positive there, they cancel each other out. The fact that they're also multiplied by a, which is a constant, doesn't matter. The same happens for these two terms. Again, the sum of all the masses times y sub i is equal to the sum of all the masses times y cm. So since these are equal and one is negative, one is positive, they cancel out as well. So those four, ter four terms simply cancel out because they add up to zero. So this cancels out with that, and this cancels out with that, which means we're simply left with this portion of the equation, which shows that the parallel axis theorem can be easily derived, well, Maybe not so easily, takes a little algebra, but can be derived by simply taking the object right here, defining the center mass when the object, when the axial rotation is at the same location as the center mass, and then we move it and we come up with a new equation, we can then algebraically reduce that to make it look like that. And that's where the parallel axis theorem comes from. And that's how it's done.